everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. I have been asked by one of you lovely viewers if I had a tutorial for my um, enamel dots little box here. Um, a, a little while back I made um, my... Just grab them. I, gra I made my um, embellishment holders um, using... Um, the original design from Poodle's Paper Craft, um, but I just added some little sections here for the um, embellishments. And I wanted something separate because there are quite a few enamel shapes, I wanted something a little bit different to add them to. And so I made this. Now I didn't give the dimensions on how to make this just because it was a simple box and I just added it to my blog. But a lovely lady has asked me if I would do a tutorial. So I thought, well, why not? Let's make another one. And to be fair, this one's getting a little bit tatty. So I thought, well, I'll just make another one. The good thing is I'm going to be using my own measurements that I had on my blog. So let's see if they will work for me. So. We need a sheet of cardstock, if I can grab it, that is eight and a half by eight inches. And then we need two, oh, no, not the trimmer. That's not helpful. Although you can use your trimmer if you wish. Oh, you need your scoring board. And you need to score at two and a half inches on all the sides. So just every corner, just spin round, two and a half, and that's that. Just move that out of the way. I don't seem to have any space today, I don't know why. So then grab your bone folder and let's fold and burnish all of our score lines. And then obviously we need to trim our corners. So this is now the base of your box. So it's going to sit up this way. So your corners are your tabs. So I'm going to cut down this one. And just add some wedges. I'm only going to cut a wedge into this bit here. We'll see why in a moment. Oh. And again the other side, cutting down these little corners. And cut a wedge and the last one. And I'm using Blushing Bride by the way. This is the cardstock I'm using for this one. The previous one was in powder pink. So, before I do any more, we need to be adding our panels. And I'm using Bundle of Love this time. I think this is beautiful. I adore the gold on the other side. Isn't it just beautiful? That's another reason why I'm using this one, because then I can uh, use some lovely new DSP as well. So, pop your panels on. So, the two panels for the front and back are going to be three and a quarter by two and a quarter inches because obviously these are a little bit wider and then the side panels are two and three quarters by two and a quarter and we're just going to pop those on I like this one and then I'm just going to grab my fuse and let's fuse up these edges. So and there we have some fuse on our tabs and then we just fold them up. Oops, more fingers and thumbs and sticking. And the reason I didn't cut the wedges out of the top is for this reason, because they are going to be seen at the top of your box. And you don't want some uneven shapes and wedges down the side. So there's your basic box. 
you just need to add some dividers and as you can see mine are slightly higher so to make your dividers and I'm going to add three this time because my original one my subtles are at the front and then my brights and my regals now I knew that but I just thought well it would be nice to have subtles at the front so I'm going to make three this time that'll be nice won't it so my dividers three pieces of cardstock that are five and a half by three inches grab my scoring board that I moved away and then with all three of the cardstocks we just score one inch either end so obviously save me twisting about we're five and a half so we score at four and a half so one and four and a half one and four and a half and then just get that away whoops sorry head banging the tripod and then we fold and burnish all of our bits here and then we need to stamp the top so I used the labeler alphabet here and I need basic black and then you just very quickly need to so I'm just going to do my subtles to show you what I did here so this is the labour intensive bit and it also gets you checking out your spelling now I find that when I do these sometimes you're better off just doing them at an angle so that it doesn't even look like you've tried oh no I'm going to T next nearly whoops and then an L and this is also where you end up getting your fingers very black and mucky off these because they're such tiny little stamps that you can't help oh no that's not the right one I've picked up a number two there instead this is my ass okay like I said, I won't do all of them because it will bore you. So once you've put your um, label on, don't go all the way to the top. Leave a little bit, get your fuse on there. And then all you need to do, obviously with my first one, is slide it into the front, push it right up and then get that glue to stick. Now when you come to do your next one stamp your word on the top put your fuse on again and when you put it in put it up to the edge of the subtles there and then the last one should fit in to the end there in fact this one's just a little bit shorter you may need to trim a little bit off that one but that's where it looks and then because I've added this one all you then need to do is get your scissors and just cut from the corner right down to where the word uh, sorry to where the box starts it's always awkward to do the alternate one and that gives you that sloping finish and if you do that with each one you will get this little look at the side and like I said once you've added these two with your third one let's have a look you will like I said you will just need to trim a little bit off so just get your trimmer 
and let's have a look. Let's take off, let's take off one centimetre because that will give you enough to adhere and it should give you enough clearance too. So cut off one centimetre, adhere it. Yes, that works perfect. There's still enough there. And there you have it, your little three, or if you only want two, then you start at the back and add your back one first, and then your first one butts up to the edge of that one. Just the same, but in reverse. And there's my new one. So I'm quite pleased with that. I hope that's okay for the lady that wanted me to do it as well. Um, all the products that I've used are available in the store and the link for the shop is in the description bar below. There is also a link on my blog and obviously the details for everything that I've used and the measurements are also on my blog um, and the link for that is below. Hope you guys all have a great day and get making your enamel shape holders. Have a great day. Bye.